Hello again, uh, welcome again to factorizing trinomials and this time we're looking at a trinomial where the leading coefficient is not 1. In other words, I literally have a coefficient in front of my x squared plus bx plus c. Now, the first thing I just want to say is sometimes this leading coefficient can be taken out as a common factor. And let me do one example and then assume that you understand. Let's take 2x squared uh, minus, uh, let's go for 10 plus 10x plus 8. Okay, let's go for that. Notice that in this case, I have a leading coefficient that's not equal to 1, but actually it can simplify to that by taking out 2 as a common factor because 2 can divide in itself into 10 and into 8. Then this becomes 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 4. And again, we see here we are working with a trinomial that we've been looking at so far where my leading coefficient is equal to 1. And all I need to do is just keep this 2 as a common factor in front the whole time. Okay, So this is going to go into two brackets. We've looked at numerous examples. What times what gives me 4? Positive 4, so the same sign, but I must get negative 5. So both must be negative numbers so that when I add it together I get negative 5. The only thing I can do to multiply and get 4 and to add to get 5 is the letter is the numbers 1 and 4. And there I factorized this trinomial that had a leading coefficient that's not equal to 1 by first just common factorizing it out. So again, Please keep this in consideration. The first thing always, the first thing always, the first thing always to do when factorizing is find out if there's not a common factor. That's the very first thing we do. Now let's assume there is not. Okay, so now we're assuming there is no common factor. Let's just see when will I actually get a coefficient for this x term. Well obviously that coefficient comes from multiplying these two brackets but there are there's actually a coefficient here so let's call this sx to be the coefficient here plus t and this one we will call uh, vx plus let's call it ux, ux plus v. Okay, so where does the a come from? Well, the a is when I when I take the first term times the first term. So let's multiply this out, see what we get. Okay, first term times first term gives me s, u, x. Okay, so a is the product of the coefficients of these two squared, then the next one would be t u x. I'm skipping a few steps. I know how to do this in my head. Plus v s x. Plus the last term would be t times v. So here we go. And again we see, is this a trinomial? Yes, because v, u, t and s, they're all numbers. So t times u is a number and s, uh, v times s is a number. So I've got a coefficient for the x and another coefficient for x. So I'll just be able to add these two together. So, so that when I do add it together, I get s, u, x squared plus t, u plus v, s times x, so adding those two together and then multiplying it to x plus tv. Okay, now here I have that this is therefore my coefficient a, this is my coefficient b, and this is my coefficient c. Now this factorizing, I have to admit, is one of the more trickier ones, so much so that one of my students used to call it the mother method. Okay, so uh, I call it the cross method, but you want to call it the mother method, it's definitely appropriate. It is a little bit more difficult. So what I want you to notice is that what we're trying to do is write this into two brackets. Here's the two brackets. Where t and v 
are the coefficient uh, are the factors of c so t times v gives me c s times u gives me a but now how do i choose which coefficients will i use to get a and which coefficient uh, sorry which factors should i choose that give me a and which factors must i choose to give me c well here's the defining uh, characteristic is that t times u in other words this one times that one and v times s this one times that one when i add those two products together i should get this one so b is equal to s times v plus t times u i don't know if you can see there but it, it's really quite complicated to do in your head actually i i can't do it in my head most of the times okay so what i'm going to do is just show you what happens when i take these two so i take s x plus t and the other one is ux plus v now look what i get when i multiply top times top so it's s times u okay s times u is equal to a so when i multiply like this i get a and multiply like this i get a, t times v t times v that gives me c okay but when i multiply across like this and like that i get s times v and then i add the other one t times u t times u and this will give me b okay so this is kind of the introduction to the cross method so let me just give you a brief description of what the cross method would look like the cross method is so called because what i'm going to do is draw a cross on this side i'm going to write the factors of a okay so here i'm going to try one factor so something times something else that when I multiply these two things when I multiply them together I must get a okay then I'm going to try factors of c so c one factor of c times another factor of c when I multiply them together I must get c but then when I cross multiply a word you probably hear or a phrase you probably hear often in maths when I cross multiply that must be a two when I cross multiply this one and get an answer so I get a1 times c2 this factor or that factor and I cross multiply these two okay plus the other factor for a and the other factor for c and I add them together I should get b and now I must go and try and that this is where the difficulty comes in it's going to be a few tries trying the a uh, factors and the c factors and see which ones can i get so that i when i cross multiply i get b it's really a trial and error process so that's why it takes some time not always that difficult but it takes some time okay so and when i do have that when i know what this factor and that factor is this factor and that factor is i will have this to be my one bracket so this will be a x plus c and this would be my other bracket which would be a2x plus c2 so i think this is all up in the air you'll probably understand much better when i do a few examples in the next video so i do apologize if you watch this with the hope of seeing examples you've just wasted nine minutes but uh, in the next video i promise to show you some examples see you there